delegates and honorable guests. Change is possible. Old enemies can work together and we can make things better. For 45 years, the USSR was separated from the United States by a veil of fear. Now, the United States and the Russian Federation are some of the greatest allies. Indeed, yesterday, our two nations came together to pre prevent ethnic violence from spiraling out of control. Yesterday, all the nations of the Security Council, the most powerful nations on Earth, came together to unanimously agree on a resolution that will encourage Serbians and the Kosovar people to peacefully decide on what is best for their region of the world. The UN will not dictate their future. Other nations will not decide for them. We will only help to provide the framework in which they will be able to decide. Increasingly, the great powers of the world must come to realize <coughs> that populations must be able to choose for themselves. The people of every nation have the right to autonomy and sovereignty. They have the right to be free from the meddling forces of nations outside their borders. I must admit that my nation has not always respected these rights for others. In the depths of the Cold War, we often meddled in other places. We used military force to bend nations to our will in places such as Afghanistan. But while I am sorry for our past, I could not be prouder of our present and our future. You say in your English language that actions speak louder than words, and indeed it is probably true. So let Russia's actions speak for themselves. Russia has a long history of contributing to UN peacekeeping missions. And since the end of the Cold War, Russian troops have only engaged in national defense, disaster relief, and peacekeeping. However, there are still those nations that use military force to take away the rights of populations and the sovereignty of nations. In the last 10 years, twice, Russia has advised caution and twice, some of the greatest powers on earth have violated national sovereignty. Once with the cautious backing of the UN in Afghanistan, and once in a clear violation of international law in Iraq. Now, as tensions continue to flare, Russia once again urges caution when dealing with Iran. Russia has repeatedly demonstrated its commitment to ensuring that Iran does not violate its commitments under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. And we have complied with, and in fact supported, all four Security Council resolutions aimed at limiting Iran's nuclear weapons ambitions. But the world must exercise caution. We must not back Iran into a corner. The decisions of some nations to unilaterally introduce sanctions against Iran send the wrong message. We must send the message that we stand together. Threats of violence also do not and cannot help the situation. The Iranians are a strong people who are, as all nations should be, concerned with protecting their national sovereignty. Yesterday in Halifax, United States Senator Graham announced that the government of Iran should be, quote, neutered. He said that the U.S. should not only neutralize Iran's nuclear program, but also sink their navy, destroy their air force, and deliver a decisive blow against their government. This is not how the world should work. Violence does not lead to peace. Indeed, it never has. Let us remember that the United Nations were founded on the promise, never again. The UN was founded on the ideals of international cooperation and communication. Let us not forget this. Might does not make right. Only the people of the world make right. Let all of us work together to create a world where the rights of the people are respected and the sovereignty of all nations is respected. Thank you.